there have been many, many discussions about Final Fantasy XV's story, and we've actively engaged in taking part in that discussion, providing different theory videos while analyzing elements of the story in detail and highlighting its pitfalls. And it also makes sense to do so. I mean, we want a story that we can become engrossed by, protagonists that we can root for, and antagonists we can love to hate. Final Fantasy XV had this in parts, but in general it felt like there was something missing. There was just a lack of coherence throughout, with characters like Ravis lacking consistent development, and others like Idolus and Verstal essentially being written out of the script. Other things that were promised, such as the theme of the game being about a father and son relationship, also just disappeared and it made a lot of people wonder, what happened? I mean, when you have plot details being revealed by a character relationship map in the guidebook, you know something's wrong. Well, according to Nova Crystallis, Hajime Tabata has now spoken to Game Informer about that exact topic. And to summarize, he's confirmed that it was all done on purpose, because they chose to switch the focus of the story to being told through Noctis's eyes. He said, The world and the events that Noctis sees are merely things that are seen through his eyes. We didn't want to create a comprehensive and perfectly balanced story in this game. Instead, we placed importance on the main characters and for the player and Noctis to share the same experience when we tell the story. Tabata went on to explain that they also didn't decrease the role of side characters. Instead, they just placed more importance on the four main characters and strived to depict a world as seen from their perspective. It's at this point that I like to interject a little and go away from the usual run for this type of video, because I'm sorry. What? I've got a few points here. First off, while there are big parts of the story that are told from Noctis' perspective, there are also quite a few other parts that aren't. I'm pretty sure that unless he has some kind of hardcore intelligence gathering equipment, he wasn't in Signatus Keep when Idolus was giving the order for Luna Freya to be killed. Likewise, I'm also pretty sure he wasn't eavesdropping on this nice little conversation between Ravis and Arden, and he wasn't there when Luna Freya healed these guys from the Scourge or when Luna Freya met with Gentiana outside of Insomnia. There are other sections which are also dubious too, such as private conversations between Luna Freya and Ravis. You could argue that Ravis told their servant about these conversations, but it's doubtful that he went into very much depth over what was said. In other words, it's from Noctis' perspective, apart from when it's not. The second part of this answer also contradicts the first. It's from Noctis' perspective, but also from the group's perspective too? Well, if that were the case, we wouldn't have to purchase DLC to see what they were up to when they disappeared, would we? I will admit, some of this does feel as though it's been lost in translation. What he's describing is an unbalanced story. It focuses on the protagonists an awful lot to the detriment of the wider narrative. But do you really want to go on record as the director of a role-playing game as saying you purposely didn't produce a comprehensive or balanced story, and that the elements were pretty much cut from the game under the pretense that they weren't from Noctis' perspective, so it didn't make sense to show, only to charge gamers later to see their perspective? I'm really not sure what Tabata looked to gain from this interview. It seems more confused than anything. None of these answers help to really explain why we ended up with what we did. If anything, they serve to highlight the lack of coherence throughout the development of the game. Perhaps this was their vision, but as noted with the discrepancies between Kingslave and Final Fantasy XV, perhaps some people just didn't get the memo. Alright, time to step off the soapbox and move on to the rest of the interview as Tabata spoke about two different halves of the game and how they came to be. After leaving for Altissia, the game changes pace, moving away from the open world experience, through to one that's much more focused. However, instead of this being an active decision from a storytelling perspective, Tabata noted that instead it was based around logistics. He said based on calculations that the development time and cost would double if the latter half of the game was to be open world, we had already planned to make the second half of the game more a journey by vehicle. In a way I'm glad they took this decision as it would have massively delayed the game. It also adds credence to Tabata's recent comments about expanding the Niflheim continent, allowing players to roam around. He noted that it's not in their plans, but if they were to do this, it would take approximately a year for them to accomplish. So, how do you guys feel about this news? Let us know in the comments below and have your say! Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe! Also, if you'd like to support our channel, please be sure to head over to the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash ffunion. These awesome folks have already done so, so why not join them? Thanks for watching guys, this is Lauren signing out, see you next time!